Team Phoenix and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Catherine Maina. Please call me Kate Mimi. It's been a while. See, the excitement that I had last time during my graduation has now weaned off and back to serious business. So we're going to talk a little about the bombshell I dropped on you guys last time and that is breast cancer. So tune in. Let's talk, shall we? Kate Phoenix and thank you for tuning in to this um, We YouTube channel. <coughs> And thank you for sticking with me if you've not subscribed this is the time to do that and please 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 like the video and let us continue growing this youtube channel basically what i do if you're new to this channel i talk matters nursing um nursing healthcare workers and things that matter to them and also health education so we deal with a lot with non-communicable diseases interestingly i never thought that at one point i would stop being a nurse and I become a patient of one of the non-communicable diseases. So I've been talking a lot about chronic kidney disease, especially because that's my new job nowadays. I'm dealing with um, advanced kidney disease. Um, I'm a nurse, oh, sorry, in the United Kingdom from Kenya. Thank you very much. So I became a patient in the month of April. Um, it's, it's rather funny, not of kidney disease, but breast cancer i know that sounds scary doesn't it <gasps> cancer i know i know i know it's associated with a lot of fatality and so on and so forth but you know what this is my truth and i feel that me putting myself out there you guys are going to learn one or two things you're going to identify risk factors you're going to know things that you can do to prevent yourself from developing breast cancer if at all there is anything catherine and the other thing is you will get to familiarize yourself with how to check for um, lumps or things like that and how to do self breast examination i was messing with my breasts i wasn't actively doing self breast examination i was just exploring my body i know it sounds funny but yeah <laughs> go sue me <laughs> that's what i was doing and i come across this um this this you know grip like thingy on my left breast and it was so scary because um from the little nursing that i have um the little nursing education about breast cancer that I've, i have i know that there's a difference between lumps that move and lumps that do not move that's what i thought at that particular point in time and this lamp was actually not moving it wasn't big really it was just the size of a small grip okay and um i went i would I got concerned and I talked to the GP. I told my GP, oh, you know, I found a lamp and I think I should come in for you to examine me. And God bless her. She called me in and I went for the examination. She wasn't worried because she told me, you know, um, girls your age, I'm 30, thank you very much. Girls your age have innocent lamps. And I know that, I know that. Um, I have a family, a close family member who once had a lamp which was not, you know, cancerous and it was removed. All the pathology tests came back negative and I was like yeah I don't have any family history of breast cancer yeah no one in my family has ever been diagnosed with cancer even the extended relatives I was like I know I'm good and the GP was like yeah we might be good but still let's go to the breast unit that's one of the things I really love about the United Kingdom they have really invested in speciality so once you get diagnosed with such things um, they you know they refer you to the right people so they send me to the breast unit um, and I went, that was um, a day after my birthday. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, just a day after my birthday, or was it on my birthday? Anyway, something like that. I went and um, the, the, the surgeon that I met, that is an oncology surgeon, he did a scan on my breast and he said, um, well, let's do a mammogram just to be sure. So um, being a nurse, uh, you, you're trying to be a patient, but at the same time, you know you're a nurse. So you will, you know, you will check things around you. You want to be aware of your environment. So I checked the monitor when he was doing the scan. This is an ultrasound on my breast. And I was like, um, it looks irregular. That's what I told him because I could see the outline of the lamp on the screen. I was like, um, this is not round. This thing looks zigzag, like it has edges that are serrated, you know, like the steak knife. That's how it was looking on the monitor. I was like, um, now I'm starting to get worried. So um, we, did the, we did the mammogram and um, shock of all shocks, I had stage one breast cancer. Hey guys, I've never been so confused in my life, really. I've never been so, 
I've never really wanted um, for all the reserves of strength that are within me to come up and be there for me at that particular point in time. So I thank God that I had a very good support system from my friends in Kenya, my friends in the United Kingdom. People really came through for me. And you, when you get diagnosed with such a thing, and especially when it is early stage breast cancer, and I will tell you guys about the importance of familiarizing yourself with your own body, it's everybody wants to do something right. Everybody wants to do the right thing, okay? And then you're insulated, you're cautioned by this group of doctors, you know, nurses, specialists, counselors. Everybody wants to be part of your life, okay? So you have what I would call a support system of experts. And then treatment ends and you're alone. It throws you in a turmoil and it has thrown me in quite a turmoil which we will address later. What happened with, with me is that I only did, um, well, only is not a word that I should include in this journey. I had um, lumpectomy, lumpectomy that is removal of the lump and a wee bit of breast tissue and then I had radiotherapy. Now radiotherapy is different from chemotherapy in that chemotherapy is systemic that we are targeting all the cells in the body. But then again radiotherapy is only concentrated to that area where you know the breast cancer was and that is what i underwent and then i had to take a break and go to kenya so that is why there was such a big lull of no youtube videos because i was in kenya i needed to go and talk to my family and tell them what's up you know and just find that comfort so enough of that guys i've been told probably or you have read about you know self breast examination or you're supposed to do it after your periods for women you're supposed to lift your arm and you're supposed to you know start from you know have imaginary four quadrants on your breast and then you start you know palpating and palpating and palpating palpating and going to your armpits i would want to tell you forget everything that you've you've been told forget it all because it is not going to help you much it does not matter at what point in your cycle you are checking your own breasts what i would want to tell you guys uh my lovely team phoenix is fall in love with your body um yeah like me twiddle and fiddle with your breast i mean get in, get to know them get to love them why because there is such a big difference in detecting some diseases especially cancer when it is in its early stages whereby it's curable and detecting it in advanced stages bear with me here i know that management really differs even when somebody is in first stage or stage two or things like that they differ with, with um you know they, they all depend with individual patient circumstances but the truth of the matter is there is quite a difference with us diagnosing breast cancer in catherine stage one and if it was diagnosed at stage three or four or things like that okay guys so fall in love with your breast please um examine your breast just fiddle with them guys as long as you have breasts you are at a risk of breast cancer it is as simple as that men and women get breast cancer but it is more prevalent in women it is more prevalent in women especially because of our genetic makeup and our hormonal constitu constitution we have hormones that is the progesterone and the estrogen which time and again predispose us to getting breast cancer it really happens so if you're a woman remember that you're at a very high risk so continue examining your breast the other thing that i would want to mention is smoking and severe intake of alcohol those two things smoking in whatever level okay in whatever level shape or form of smoking i don't care whether you're vaping or whatever you're doing but it is a very high risk for breast cancer development the other thing is uh, we have family disposition sometimes you have history of breast cancer in your family it can happen and other times you have inherited a mutated gene that is a gene that is faulty and if this gene is faulty it is does not offer you any protection against breast cancer but it makes you actually develop breast cancer now guys the other thing um is actually being overweight perhaps uh, overweight and being obese you know if you're not physically active if you're leading a sedentary lifestyle these are things that will compound all the things that are going to cause breast cancer now 
if you have been diagnosed with breast cancer let me tell you one of the things that i did <laughs> is actually what i've just told you listing down the factors that can actually make somebody get breast cancer and i was ashamed i was guilty i was feeling so bad about myself i was like what have i done that has made me get breast cancer you know i and then i went to this um site and they were saying not having a baby you know not having a baby the breast can actually get cancer then i was like is it because i never got a baby when i was in my 20s is that why it's happening but then again i got to a group where we had people who had children and yet they're having breast cancer so these are some of the things that I've had to contend with and realize that um, it took a lot. It took it took um, it took blood, sweat, tears, and a lot of Jesus for me to actually accept that it was not my fault. It was not anybody's fault that I developed breast cancer. I did not do anything wrong. Um, that is what happened. So um, for you, Team Phoenix, who are probably you've been diagnosed with breast cancer. I don't know. Probably you're worried about breast cancer. Probably there's a lump in your breast and you don't know what to do about it. My first piece of advice would be go talk to your doctor. And to every doctor out there, I would say um, take lumps seriously. Please do because suppose my GP just went with my history. Suppose she said, oh, by the way, you know, you don't have any family history of breast cancer. You're quite active because I've been very active. I've been walking, I've been swimming, I've been doing everything else. So I really have been in a very, very active. So the doctor would have taken that history and said, oh, you're good. There is nothing to worry about. But she did the right thing. So I would say for you medics out there, whether you're a nurse and somebody approaches you and they are worried about a lump, before you dismiss it as not as non cancerous, can you please think about referring this person to the right place? Can you think about a breast ultrasound? Can you think about a mammogram if they are, you know, advanced in age or there is a concern with the ultrasound? These are the things that you need to really take seriously. And if you do this, if we do this as medics, then we are instilling confidence in the public for them to come through when they have concerns. And what this does is actually reduce the burden of cancer. Guys, I've, I've, um, I've, I've lost people from my support group um, to cancer, people who we thought they were beating it and then um, we, we have lost them and it weighs down on me so much and it makes me feel guilty sometimes. Um, we will talk about this later. It's called survivor's guilt whereby you're like, what did I do? Survivor's guilt where I feel and many people will tell you this you feel guilty you're like why did that person die probably they have a family you know and now i'm looking at myself i'm like what is this that what kind of grace what kind of favor is this that it was diagnosed in stage one even when i'm feeling so low i end up you know beating myself up which is an entirely different topic but what i'm trying to emphasize here at team phoenix is that you need to love your breasts, you need to look at them, feel them. Please do not be afraid. Do not say that what I do not know does not kill me. In breast cancer that does not apply. What you do not know will most certainly kill you. It will kill you uh, because it is going to develop, it is going to advance to the lymph nodes, it's going to spread to the bones, it's going to spread to the lungs, spread to the liver, spread to the brain. Most of the time in that um, chronological order, and what are we going to do? We are going to lose your life. What about the contribution you make in the society? What about the wonderful piece of joy you are to have you around? What will happen? What about the kind of guilt you will feel for ignoring some of these things? So I would really encourage you. It is difficult, but um, it's not easy, guys. It, it was never meant to be easy anyway, but um, it's doable. Um, go to the doctors and we have agreed that the doctors and other medics are going to take it seriously and once you're diagnosed if you're out there and you're there already you're a fighter you're a warrior i really don't like the word survivor i'm i don't like calling myself a breast cancer survivor it feels wrong i don't know it feels like i'm i'm a victim and i'm not you know i, I don't know i think it has to do with semantics who knows but i call myself a cancer fighter you know a breast cancer fighter but then again um if you're there you're out there please know that you're not alone look at me find hope find resilience find strength in your situation 
and um continue with treatment please do not give up if treatment has been advised kindly don't give up we will talk about it we will talk about surgery we are going to talk about radiotherapy we are going to talk about chemotherapy we are going to talk about everything including these very annoying hormone blockers hmm? which have put people on temporarily menopause eh? and all the crazy side effects but we are going to talk about that sawa 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 means okay <laughs> yeah so um my heart goes out to you everybody who's been diagnosed with breast cancer and you families that are taking care of people with breast cancer my heart goes out to you look in all my nursing career i really never paid much attention to cancer you know those things that you just block in your mind i never paid attention to cancer as much i was like oh i love the kidneys let me go for kidneys oh yeah it's hypertension it's diabetes and that's it so when the reality of breast cancer came to me it actually made me very awake to so many clinical trials that are continuing as we speak so many you know advanced management of cancer that i was not even aware of uh, it made me want to learn more about breast cancer it made me go into contact with um people who are involved with um, giving credible information about cancer and that is why i'm here that is why i thought that because this on this channel we do a lot of health education then perhaps i can use this particular moment to talk about it and teach somebody something out there so that's it for now guys on the next um on the next video we are going to go into other bits and pieces about breast cancer interestingly i never thought i would put myself out there but the problem is when i went to kenya and i really sought for you know credible organizations that are you know that are not for profit that are just giving credible information to people i really struggled with that so i'm hoping this will help people to come together wherever they are especially in my country kenya probably i'm lucky or blessed whichever way you want to look at it because i'm in the united kingdom where healthcare is free and i know that most of my ladies back in kenya are struggling because healthcare is very expensive especially at the mention of the word cancer the c word is very 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 uh, you know scary expensive and it can easily cripple you so um i know these are factors that are to be considered am i scared you know all these things you know and, and how do i deal with it what keeps me going i think that's a question anyone should want to know believe you me i also want to know what in the world keeps me going you know making these videos laughing as if um i ate half the yellow sun and um <laughs> writing because i write and i'll give links on my on my description below on the where i've shared this story yes so we are going to talk about all that so um talk to me link up with me follow me on facebook i think i'm more active on facebook than anywhere else and i happen to start an instagram page please follow that as well okay until next time guys